Okay, we're live for the 15th edition of the Data Value Show. Today's title is going to be called The Value of Data Quality for AI and ML. And again, I've got more than one guest like last week. I've got two guests today. I have one co-located co -located with me today, George. And bring another into the studio. We've also got Paul. Welcome, Paul and George. Hey there. Hey, Paul. Hi there. So I normally start with a little bit of intro of, of background of how, I, how I've met or um, well, where I've worked with uh, the people on the show. So myself, well, George has worked with us internally, helping us with our own governance and ISO uh, maturity. Um, also been a, uh, someone I speak regularly about a lot of things about data, but mainly about business value, which is my favorite topic. Um, so I'll, before I rant on, I'm going to let George give himself an intro. We'll go into call. Yeah, so I'm George Bidell uh, with Cambia. Uh, mostly dealing with uh, uh, information security and governance. Uh, but the way I got to there uh, and uh, was, was through way of, of doing a bunch of uh, large scale transformation projects over the last decade. You and I started speaking about this. We'll get into history a little bit. Yep. Uh, when I was doing data transformation stuff, uh, you know, maybe five, six years ago. Yeah. And Paul, a bit of background about yourself. Sure. So um, I'm a senior research fellow at the University of Southampton. Uh, I'm based in computer science, but I actually work across a number of disciplines. Um, so I, I also do work in philosophy as well. Um, my primary areas of research interest um, include AI, um, ontologies, various topics in data science, um, and, and also work related to virtual reality. That's the computer science side of things. And then on the philosophical front, I do work on machine consciousness, the nature of human intelligence, and um, uh, something called the extended mind, which is the idea that the, the human mind is not confined to the, the borders of the biological brain. So, well, part, well, that must keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> it does us too too many too many fronts to work on. <laughs> but I, I think that what's common is that there's a very data quality and, and, and contracts ontology is what glues all this stuff together. So uh, I can see that the, the, the common the common ground of uh, the the, uh, the theme between all of those things you talk about. So we've got and today we're very lucky because not only do we just have a talk, we've actually got some slides we can refer to. So this is a, the most professional one we've done so far, I think. Um, so at some point we may we may refer to some uh, some slides that that will help with the story. But on the the description of the the the, um, the show we had five bullet points, so we're going to work through them and see where it goes. So I think the the first thing that we we had on there was uh, the history of IT transformations and the future uh, transformations in the di digital world. Um, so George, you want to start start with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll, to some degree, I'm, I'm here to complain. Uh, <laughs> we'll get on our soapboxes and moan about the world. Yeah, well, so I'm starting. I, I started a new project not that long ago, which is uh, uh, another maturity model. This one for uh, information security. Yep. Uh, and so uh, you know, the, the thing that I'm really concerned about these days is is governance at the executive um, and leadership level. Yep. Um, and I and I know from past experience from doing these sort of big transformation projects that 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 I'm going to need strategic level data, uh, and that somewhere uh, that data is being produced uh, by by machines and robots and things that don't speak human. Yep. Uh, and so I was, I was thinking about this, uh, and uh, I was getting stressed out because <laughs> because it, it doesn't feel like there's good tools for it. Uh, and so, uh, so that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. Is uh, uh, how did we get here? What are the problems? Uh, and then, and then hopefully some some possible solutions. So, I mean, it's I mean, it's going to be a history, and I suppose yeah. where we're going with this. And we both, <clears throat> we well, we probably all worked on some large scale transformations until now. And what the technology has changed during that period. So, what what do you think that what what's changed in technologies that's going to make IT transformations less risky, more uh, um, less less uh, less chance of failure, and 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 quicker to succeed. 
I mean, obviously the, plat the platforming technology has come a long way. Right? So mm -hmm. we were sticking a lot of the stuff together uh, by hand uh, uh, not that long ago. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there are still some products out there that uh, when you go and try to automate things, it's quite difficult. But people are moving towards yep. uh, towards sort of understanding that that the creation and the, um, the getting of data uh, must now sort of happen without people around. Yeah. Uh, and and I think the AI and ML. It's, we're starting to learn the same lessons that we're talking about. Yeah. So, Paul, obviously, you're you're living in the the, the academic world um, to some degree. So, what 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 do you what do you see happening in the university you're working with at the moment to um, to make people challenge the challenge the past or the norm and to 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 change things for the better in the future? <laughs> Gee. Um, well, I mean, the first, I, I, I guess the first thing is that to say is that it's it, it's actually quite difficult working um, in computer science at the moment because things are changing very rapidly. So it's very difficult to to keep abreast of new developments, and those developments tend to be very distributed. So some of them occur in academia, but there's quite a lot of innovation. In fact, I would say the bulk of innovation is happening in, in industry. So it's it's very difficult to anticipate um, where where things are moving to. Um, and it's quite difficult to embark on research projects that span multiple years when you're working against that ever-changing um, backdrop. Um, the kinds of topics that that I'm exploring at the moment are, I guess they divide into two issues. So, so the first is a, is a set of kind of normative issues about what we ought to be doing. Um, and, and work in that area is guided by the sorts of um, sorts of worlds we want to bring into existence, the sorts of worlds that future generations will have to deal with. Um, the, the other set of issues the, the the other strand of research is more devoted to technical capabilities trying to advance the state of the art um that's always very difficult of course given that um big tech companies tend to have the the lion's share of the funding to to work in this area but nevertheless i think there are there are some important issues related to um things like advanced intelligence, how we can progress, how we can move AI um, more towards human level type capabilities by drawing on ideas from a number of other disciplines. Um, and then in the in the kind of data science space, um, there are ideas about how to enhance the quality of data, how to select data, how to get systems to attend to the right data, because there's a lot of data out there, but not all of it is necessarily germane to a particular task. Not all of it's necessarily useful when it comes to, to learning or acquiring new capabilities. So, so part of the challenge here is to get machines to a point where they are being very selective about the data that they attend to. Um, and then there is there are, there is also an issue about um, about data quality and the right sort of data, and that's partly connected to this attention related issue. But but also, if you think about human cognizers, we generate a lot of data for ourselves. So everything that we do, every time we make a movement, we are generating data that gets fed back into the brain. And so there are issues hear about how we might be able to get machines to generate their own data that then gets used for, for for their own learning activities, their own learning efforts, and then that progressively bootstraps them to a more advanced level of intelligence. So that's that's kind of roughly where, where I am at the moment. Yeah, and I think there's a few things that I, I just tease a few words at it and you're saying it, and, and one that I always like to use and it, it's the art of the possible and, and i think you, you know, of art of what can be achieved and you know we're here to talk about quality and i think what's really good is there's a lot of talk on quality now and i think that that's that bubble that we we've lived in a world we all know that data was bad and we've been banging on about it 
I think now the business is understanding the the value <laughs> in in good quality data, and we touched on qu just term quality before we, we came in here. And well, it's kind of new. Right? Yeah, and, and it's I mean also okay, let, yeah. Let, let's actually like what is data quality, and, and everyone has different views on on what actual what, what's meant by quality. And, I mean, quality, I'd say, is anything that affects the decision that the data is being used for. And that could be the data is missing. The data is not complete. Uh, the, the data doesn't have enough context around it. So it goes on to ontolog ontologies and things like that. And up until now, if someone says quality is, oh, it's bad, it's in lower case, it's mixed case, or they've got the same code for multiple things. And I think quality is much, much bigger than that. And, and, and I think... Chat GBT, generative AI, AI machine learning, everyone wants it now. And I think everyone's being told, unless you fix the quality, it's never gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. we go, yeah. Yeah, and so now we're getting to to questions about quality, like you said, uh, about the, the, the whether the data has sufficient context as opposed yep. to that. That's really where, where we're, I think, you know, I, I gave Paul, Paul a, a call, you know, and, and asked about some of this. Yeah. Like, we're having the same problems. I've spoken to them once a month. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody's going through it. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, yeah. Everyone is focused on it. We've got some. Um, so, yeah. yeah let's talk about how we got, how we got here. Yeah. Uh, so, and as, as I mentioned, we've actually got some slides. So, we got, so what's going on? Got, let's go inside this to it. Here we go. Excellent. So, here you go. So, do you, want, do you want to talk through some of this stuff? Yeah. Oh, next slide. Sorry. Here we go. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. And so, I think what we want to think about is is the the history, right? Because it, this is something that it, it didn't just uh, happen. It, yeah, it didn't happen, right? So, uh, you know, when I first started really doing a data transformation stuff, uh, we I don't think it, you know we've never really thought about data, mm. uh, and then somewhere along the line, you know, twenty fourteen comes along, uh, and we're thinking about uh, we start doing data transformation. We joined up all our systems. Uh, and, and I think 2018 was maybe when you and I started talking about data yep. transformation, that, that was the first time I really heard, I mean, it's not the first time we talked about it, yep. but it's when everybody really started to, to talk about data quality. Yep. Um, and we, I think before then, we, I think um, we've been, what we've been talking about is data lakes yep. uh, and people just kind of dumping everything in one place and sort of hoping for the best. I think you're on that. I think when when it was all, when quality first started coming, it was all about the quality for it to be migrated to a new to a new environment. Yeah. And 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 I think what that all that's doing is looking at that, making sure that quality meet, meets you know, the migration activities or requirements. It doesn't actually address does the are we fixing the quality data for us to make better decisions to affect our company performance better? Um, and that's I think that's and we've moved on a little bit from people talking about other aspects, missing data, uh, inconsistent ontology, ontologies. Um, we talk about different domain ownership, who owns that data, single version of the truth. Well, yeah, and I think that's what we, I mean, we're, I think you could, the conversations we have with other people in the industry is that uh, a lot of people are starting to look at uh, having these you know, centralized data pipelines. Yep. Uh, and everybody's kind of getting data, right? So ra rather than, Putting data in one big place, I think what we're what we're all trying to do is make sure that we're getting as close to the source of, of data as possible. Yep. Uh, and now you've got these two questions, right? Which is, you know, like you, you go from where's my data, how can I get it, uh, and how, how can I use it? Those those things are like really, really sort of tied together. I think that's um, that's where we've landed after all of this transformation. Um, I, I think it gives us a couple of of problems now. Right? You go to the next slide. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so now we've, you know, we've got this whole organization with a bunch of different domains. Mm. So when we talk about domain, I think uh, when I was a developer, it's ten years ago maybe. We all thought we all thought we were going to do data domain driven design, yeah. Yeah. and that we were just going to like go around the organization and land on one domain. But but it's like near impossible because uh, we have these different tribes of the organization. Uh, all with their own languages that so you, you just can't mm -hmm. you can't jam them into one domain you can but it's a, it's a monumental yeah so i think this is where i, know, I think conway's law has been brought up in the past of when you, you you structure your department based on how your business operates 
and then that ownership comes in is okay we put the ownership on how my how my business operates but that's not how we want to use the data we want to use the data where it's crossing all those different domains and being used collectively and i don't think we're quite there at that that level of thinking of and maybe that's where ontologies come into it or actually tying these things together tying all of these different domains together and actually creating yeah uh uh, uh, derive data sets that's across those domains that are solving business problems. Yeah, so we've got a lot of problems that we're thinking about the solutions. Uh, what um, another another problem? If you go to the next guy, yeah, uh, is is uh, I've had some great conversations about this. I'm scared, but yeah. talking to people, you know, so, some of the people I talked to sort of said, "Oh yeah, um, I've got a lot of data now. Yeah, I used to deal in small amounts of data, but now you know when you have." Uh, these strategic sort of uh, considerations coming into the data use. Um, and it's the same people using that data as the operational data. So people thinking about what's going to happen next month, how many seats do I need in my data, in my uh, customer service center. Yeah. Uh, and then at the bottom, that same data uh, is being used for things like observability and, and security, and you care about milliseconds. Yeah. So joining all these data sets up and getting these sort of uh, that level of fidelity at the year-on-year -year, uh, strategic level, uh, it's, it's also created uh, another sort of reason why, why the data is uh, messy. Yeah. So I, I, before, I, I think this, uh, Sonny just uh, put a comment on there, and I think we we're going to talk about it at some point, but data contracts, okay? <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're talking about domains and domain sharing that data, and, and I... I uh, um, Andrew Jones, who was on the panel, we did at Big Data London. He wrote the book uh, on PACT, which is a data contract book on, on the actual title. Um, and yeah, so there's a big, everyone, everyone's talking about contracts now. I don't know if everyone knew, knows the best way of using them to some degree. Um, but yeah, we recognize that each of these, uh, each of these different um, Domains need to provide contracts for that data to be used. And then multiple domains provide those contracts. Those contracts can be collectively used for other things. Um, and the reason why I pull this up, one I know it's on the slide, but Sonny's just put this question up here, and um, it's a hot topic at the moment. So, so Convoy, uh, a very large logistics company in the USA, um, they prided, well, prided themselves. They, they were very proud of their. They're, uh, they're buying into data contracts, being a data-driven organization. All those use cases you've heard in the past of looking at making sure that you, know, you, you do the maintenance on the trucks at the right time, where you don't replace things so they need it, looking at the best, best timing to achieve, achieve these particular things. Um, they're Chad Salmerson, uh, a big, big LinkedIn um, voice on data contracts, he used to work, though he's gone off now to create his own company. I mean, the company's gone bust now. <laughs> um, do we think that's down to data contract? No, I don't think it. I don't think it's down to the actual approach. Um, well, we'll, we'll get into data contracts in a bit, and I, I, like everything else, it's a tool, and and you, you can't blame the tool. No, like no. there's probably some people be, behind things that that uh, uh, um, yeah. we're making those contracts, and yeah. and but it could be all the staff that work there left. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a slight joke. I think most, most of them did leave, actually. But, um, yeah, I, I, to solely to answer your question, I, I don't think that the downfall of, uh, of our convoy was, was down to um, the approach for data contracts and data quality. Um, maybe they didn't start early enough. Maybe they should have started sooner. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just a, well, a couple more. We'll, 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 well. So, so the next so – the, the... Go another side, another side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So, so right. So you get all this data, and so now everybody. So, so maybe you know, four or five years ago, uh, everybody comes along and says the robots, the robots are going to save us. The machines are going to save us. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, excellent. So, yeah. And, then, and 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 I think this is kind of uh, this is a, a pretty common. If you've ever worked in a place where the the vendors show up with their chatbots, they show up and they sort of say, "We're going to." Um, we're going to uh, uh, get rid of all your low contact data. Uh, your, sorry, your low value contact. Yep. Uh, and uh, there's a, there's a sort of inflection point that we're told uh, um, where where it's just it's just cheaper to have uh, ML and AI, uh, and it's and some people you know will take care of the really expensive contact. Um, 
And uh, what happens though, if you go to the next, the next yep. slide, um, what, I, what I, I actually go back. Oh, right, I'll, I'll double click. Yeah. There we go, here we go. Yeah, no, and so if anybody has actually worked, so I did a bunch of research uh, on a government project uh, that was trying to use chatbots. And what we found was that actually, um, you never get to that to to that promised land because what's happening is uh, the first contact that people have with organizations with contact centers, especially, normally they don't know what what's going on. Right? Yeah. A lot of times you have a problem, uh, and if you have a problem, you have to contextualize it within the domain of the organization, often through multiple parts of the organization, right? Yeah. So, so the person will say, "Oh, it's not in this system; uh, it's in that other system," uh, and the chatbots just they, they just never get there. Yeah. Uh, so that's the third problem we have. So we have all this data; uh, it's got all these domains; uh, it's got you know all this fidelity, fidelity uh, and then we have this idea that we're going to do machine learning to fix it. Yep. Uh, but it's actually because the, the data doesn't have the, the right context, and because people are the way we are, you just never get to that. So, I mean, we've got one of the other topics there, and I think you just touched on it there, and uh, I, I love your view on this one, Paul. Um, we've got another question, we'll come back to in a minute, but uh, it's the human and non-human in the loop. And and um, and we, and, well, as humans, we have a lot of context and knowledge that we don't probably don't know it's there, and we can infer it when we look at data. And the, 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 we need to provide as much of that context as possible to the machine learning for it to not hallucinate, <laughs> uh, and, but but actually to make make better informed decisions. So, how Paul, how how, how have you seen in your work doing uh, create, creating creating that context across across uh, different disparate disparate pools of data, so it can actually be used for solving business problems? Okay. Um... So, I mean, this is a very challenging issue, and I'm not sure I, I, I don't have the the answer to, to this question. We're not but, expecting all the answers, don't worry. We're just new, but I, I mean, some of the work that that, that that we're doing at the moment is um, is looking at the explicit representation of goals as a way of contextualizing the the kinds of data that a system will attend to which is is very reminiscent of the way in which we prioritize or we kind of enable streams of information to enter our own biological brains that those streams are often gated in a way that's uh, that speaks to our specific needs interests and concerns so if we're involved in a certain activity we have a certain goal then that influences the kind of inf kinds of information that we attend to so that that's that's one way of um addressing this contextualization problem <clears throat> um the, the the other strategy that i've been looking at is to to use ontologies in different domains um and um attempting to to, to to map between those domains in a way um, that enables AI systems to generate context specific response that don't violate constraints regarding semantic coherence. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit later. I appreciate that's uh, uh, yeah. that's incredibly yeah. vague. <laughs> so it's a good segue, right? So. I mean, so this is where, where people who are doing this kind of work on a day-to-day -day basis now are landing, right? So uh, this is this is a, a quote from a, a company called Sensory. They they do uh, um, uh, they they have models trained on on, on, on financial data, right? Uh, and so and, and what they're looking at here is is saying, look, you, you can take generalized models uh, and apply them to things. Uh, but you're going to have a hard time. Really, what, what you need to do is really make sure uh, that, that your model is, is trained to do the tasks that you need it to do. Uh, and you're starting to see, uh, not just this is like one company uh, uh, in one area. And I think what you're starting to see is, uh, is other vertical people, vertical slices, rather, um, where people are concentrating their efforts 
uh, to solve to solve a very directed uh, directed problem. Yeah. Um, I think that, well, that, that's I think that's the challenge at the moment. Is is um, uh, I think you mentioned this a minute ago, Paul. Is um, it, it's it's giving it's getting the right information to solve the problems or the the, the business challenges that we've got. And um, the more the more we can actually help yeah, with, with the human in the loop, a lot of human as humans, if we can help to validate the information we can, and then and then provide uh, the best chance of actually making the right decision. Um, it, it is is going to it's going to be the, the way forward. But it's how much how much how much does the human need to be in the loop? I mean, how, how when, when can we yeah. sit back and like it, it, it work out the gaps on its own? So I, I think what I think the question probably is how would we know uh, whether we need one or not? Yeah. So I, look, there, there's there's some pretty high stakes stuff and there's some pretty low stakes stuff, right? Um, if, if I'm if I'm uh, uh, using uh, ChatGPT uh, to to do the content for my website, mm. and and if you know it goes a little wonky, you don't you don't really you don't really care. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, um, the, something like medical AI, uh, medical chatbots, uh, there was this big promise I think that was made uh, that that they would that they would help a lot with uh, with uh, alleviating the problems that we have mm -hmm. with access to medicine. Uh, but what happened actually? What it turns out is that if you you know you have a, you have a is that a rash or is it cancer? It gets pretty high stakes really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so. Um, you definitely want a person training that data first of all. Yep. Second, that person needs to be a doctor or at least understand medical stuff. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty hot. So, so I think back to what Paul said. It's like it depends on what you're trying to do, and then, and then second, you kind yep. of want to think about uh, um, how automatable is this? You know, it, and I think those, the risk those, associated yeah, to it as well. And I think it, it's I suppose we we train we train algorithms on the historical data. And that historical data has, has had that human in in, in the loop. Um, going forward, we're going to have more historical data that's never had any human intervention, um, and we're also in a situation where we're getting older. I'm getting older, you know. And the people actually being there and done it in the old ways, you know, they're they're they're, they're becoming less less involved in things. And the same with doctors and things like that. Yeah, you know, they're, they're going to get less involved and yeah. Um, we we'll be relying too much. We'll be relying even more on on a on a, um, the AI and ML to verify the quality or, or give us the decisions. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. so we care about the context. I mean, ultimately, so so Paul, you know, Paul's my buddy, and, and I call him when I when I hit these problems. Right, I'm sort of thinking about um, how, how am I going to uh, design my my new uh, model? Um, it's got probably some ontology that I want to do. Um, what is it? And in fact, I called Paul, and 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 it was a complete coincidence that I haven't spoken to him in months and months and months, uh, and he's working on an IoT ontology, right? So, so I mean, let, let's let's double down. We use that term nowadays, ontologies. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we'd use the word quite a bit. How would you, in layman's terms, how would you? Describe describe it to there you go. It's one for you, Paul. Uh, how would you describe it to Joe Public? <clears throat> okay, so uh, an ontology is it's a little bit like, um, in one sense, it's a bit like a glossary from from a human standpoint. It's an attempt to provide definitions of terms within a particular domain. What makes it different from a standard um, glossary or thesaurus is that the the terms within an ontology are represented in such a way that they are amenable to machine processing so so rather than provide a human readable definition of terms the terms are defined using logical axioms that enables uh, a machine reasoner to make semantically coherent inferences over the ontology. So if we say that, um, that that cancer is a disease and a disease is a is a type of process, then it can infer that, that cancer is a, is a type of process, a type of, it's a type of disease and a type of process. 
The one virtue of doing that, one virtue of adding these constraints is that we are then able to, to use machine reasoners to guide the ontology development effort. So we can detect situations where we've defined something in a way that is logically inconsistent with other assertions in the ontology. So it it, it, it facilitates the, the, the effort of defining um, terms in a semantically coherent manner. Um, and then from an application oriented perspective, we can use the ontology and, and all of this additional semantic enrichment to support the interpretation of data in the real world. Um, and this is where the issue of context comes in. So mm -hmm. certain terms might be understood in different ways in, in different domains. Um, if one is able to match data to a particular ontology, then one is given a semantic lens, if you like, through which one can look at that data um, and interpret it in the correct way, in a way that is aligned with human-based forms of understanding that data. So, and so, so it's funny, so, it's funny. so I so, so reach out to Paul, he, he's like, he's knee deep in this problem, yeah. I'm thinking about it. Uh, and, and, and what I got from Paul, Paul tell me if I'm putting words in your mouth, was that uh, ontologies suck, right? That, that they're, <laughs> it's difficult to know which ones to use. Uh, it's difficult to sort of uh, uh, understand uh, what's gonna be right there. Um, so, I mean, we, and again, we talked about this just before, and that is, do, and do you think that they're they're bad because we haven't got any standards? <laughs> well, why did Paul? Why, why, so what, you, what was the difficulty you were having? Um, so the difficulty. So, so I've, uh, um, as George said, I've I've just been developing ontologies for, for 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 the Internet of Things, specifically looking at issues of security, um, and. That there are a host of challenges. So first of all, the quality that there are on existing ontologies out there that target the, the realm of IoT devices, but their quality is very variable. So, so some common problems are um, uh, incomplete ontologies, ontologies that are inconsistent with our kind of higher level understanding of more abstract terms like processes and objects, um, ontologies that are very poorly documented. So, so they, they look okay, but it's very hard to understand <laughs> what, um, what the designers of the ontology actually intended the ontology to be used for or what its contents are. Um, so it's very difficult. And then of course, you've got issues like um, terms that just nobody knows how to define that, you know, that just, our definitional understanding of certain things is still unclear or obscure. Um, you see this a lot in philosophy. So if we take a term like knowledge, for example, philosophers have been reflecting on um, the nature of knowledge. What does knowledge mean? What is knowledge? They've been reflecting on this ever since the time of Socrates, two and a half thousand years, and there still is no consensus. So if you're trying to build an ontology that features the term knowledge, then you have problems because there is no consensus definition that you can draw on and that you can represent in the ontology. So, so, so then you're then you have to resort to. I want to say your best guess, but you have to kind of survey the existing literature and come up with, with one that 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 satisfies the most constraints. Um, that's in the philosoph philosophical domain. I'm sure that you 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 encounter that also in. Um, in industrial domains, in applied domains like financial operations. Um, I mean, ontologies in security are also problematic. So terms like trust and trustworthiness, the meaning of these terms is still very obscure. There's very little consensus on what mm -hmm. these terms mean. And so trying to pin down the meaning of those terms in a form that a machine can understand is very problematic. It's problematic mm -hmm. if humans themselves are not able to provide a coherent, logically precise definition of what that term is. And I, I, I mean, I've loved your paper, you brought that the policies and, and um, working in regular, 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 um, 
Yeah. Highly regulated. Regu regulated. <laughs> regulated. Thank you. Highly regulated markets. You know, PCI compliance, things like that. Um, there's policies that you know, P PCI um, 3.2, 4.0 coming out soon. They're, they're words. They're written in words, and they need to be converted to code uh, that that actually satisfies that uh, that policy. And I've seen people read into what that actually means and then try and put a technical solution in that they that matches their their view of it and someone else can do it totally differently with with different results of how useful it is to use after that one being over secure one being not as secure one being able to get more much more value out of it one not being any value at all so yeah, yeah it's um yeah i i think it, it's not a problem that's easily solved um, but I think the more that we can write policies uh, going forward, we write these things, we can actually give that context, give that ontology of how it can actually be implemented um, and in a common way, uh, which goes back to standards. Yeah, so and so another good takeaway is to we go back to... to the which slide, yeah. Uh, so I reach out to Paul, uh, and uh, he said to me, uh, so, so, so Paul's confused, I, you know, I'm, now I'm stressed out. Uh, <laughs> because I usually really, I don't, normally he, he can kind of grab me with some things. Uh, but, so I go off and I do a bunch of research, right? This is never good when, when you're trying to do uh, uh, something practical and now you're off reading uh, research papers. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so, so yeah, so this guy, you may or may not know him, uh, Thomas Gruber, who, you know, basically, wrote a lot of the papers that, that are, uh, have led us to where we are on yep. ontologies and, and sort of uh, this uh, what's the translation approach to portable ontologies. Mm -hmm. Sounds like something we want to do, uh, which is, you know, thinking about how you can take ontologies and sort of transfer them and translate them and have them talk to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and there's a lot of neat mathematical symbols if you want to read the document. But, <laughs> yeah, me. but, but the thing that, so I'm reading this, and the thing that this really, like, just knocked me off my seat, right? Is the guy? This, so the guy says, actually, the problem of meaning. Uh, we're going to sidestep that. We're, so we're going to do a bunch of work on ontology. This is like thirty years ago, you know. Uh, and so we're so we're basically uh, like built into the way that we do ontologies mm. is uh, an exclusion. So we're saying we're not going to we're not going to deal with meaning. We're not right. going to uh, approach this problem of what it means for something to mean something. So as you say here, it was just kicked down the road. Yeah. Yeah, and we're all, you know, we're all kind of one. And, and I ask you, and you know, and you ask your buddy, and, and yeah. we're all asking each other. Uh, and it turns out that somebody like left a little, you know, a bomb for us. Back there. That, this guy, by the way, you may or may not know this. Uh, mm -hmm. in Siri. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So w when Siri uh, is like clueless about what you're trying to ask it, yeah, this is what. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he didn't think it was a problem. He, he didn't think it was a problem to solve. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, and I think it's, and so yeah, so back to data contracts. Mm. I mean, yeah, I mean, d data contracts are, are really sort of nice, like may maybe for today, uh, slightly brute forcey way to address yeah. this problem. Uh, I, I like data contracts, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think they are kind of a, a, a at least a step forward yep. uh, in terms of of giving us. Uh, uh, some idea about what the data is for. Yeah. However, um, as, as Paul said at the beginning, uh, the contract has to um, to have some some goal. Yeah. You, you know, I think I think if you're not uh, if you're not uh, uh, thinking about what the contract's for, yeah. you're doing what you know the thing that you know I, I can't stand, which is box drawing. Right? Yeah. And and. and, and and this is where uh, contracts may be used in this data contracts and this is where I, I have some beef sometimes with people saying it's a new thing knowing from the payment world i swear iso 8583 from the 1980s or whatever it is well i wasn't using it then but it's been it was created then <laughs> a little bit after um but it, it, it's descri it's describing the structure of a payment contract you know and how the payment and any associated step of that payment authorization a request for in a request for information uh, um, a, a refund, whatever, whatever the, it was defined. Here's the attributes. That's what you need. That describes that particular activity. Um, I think it's good that we've moved that into data world, but I, I don't think it, it's that new. I think you're, you're right. I think we're pinning all our hopes 
on having contracts that are going to solve this problem. I think it just it goes back to the we need a context. We need we need to actually have a common understanding of each of these attributes that is is agreed upon. Um, and we know how hard that isn't just in a small organisation. And I've got I've got a question from Philip here from uh, hi five Phil long time no long time no speak thanks for big data London recently. Um, yeah, you'd like interest in the thoughts of data steward uh, in defining data quality measures and owning those measures. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think that you're you're getting you're getting to it's fine. Good segue. Yeah, so I'm going to get a slide up as well. Yeah. That one, which is our slide. Yeah. yeah, you must have thought you must have been reading ahead, Phil. Next slide. Next slide. There we go. Next one. Next contracts. Yeah. So I mean, look. It's the last bit of philosophy, then we'll go back to the real world. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so this guy, you may or may not know him, Wittgenstein, uh, came up with this uh, thought exercise about, about, you know, private language. And, mm -hmm. and, and what he said was like, look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter what, what your thoughts are. The only thing that really matters at the end of the day is the common, uh, the common definition. Uh, and so, so yeah, it, it seems, it's the social aspect of language, I think, that that's in people. Like a contract isn't going to do that. Uh, you can you can point your machine learning at the data, but it's, uh, at least not not today. Maybe like ten years from now, twenty years from now, when the uh, when the uh, when the big event happens and the AI takes over, and it'll be able to create context. But I think for now, like what are we, what are we, uh, what are we saying about the data? Right? So and, and that requires communities. The communities require students. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's. I think it's good. I think you can't have one steward put into an organisation and they are the de facto person. If, if, they, if they're ruling by that, that Ryan Fist approach is never going to work. I think what, what you mentioned there was that, that community. I just wrote down crowdsourcing. And and I, I know from life, basically, when you're on a journey, you've got to take people on that journey. And if you go and tell them, this is what we're doing, we're going here, without them knowing why they're going there or the, or the route they're going on, they'll put in resistance. They may not even want to go but if you're able to create the right story, saying that we're going to the, on this journey for the right reason, and you've done it in a community way of getting them to agree or even challenge it, you may you may optimize that route slightly because of some input. But I I think and I'm hoping that you know the, the chat GBT, you know, the the, the the community on LinkedIn, um, a lot more people talking about this stuff. It's not being defined in isolation. You know, we, we've all seen these books being written. Maybe some of them are, <laughs> are used at university, but they're they're, 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 they're written in in um in I'll say echo chamber, maybe a, a smaller smaller bubble. And I think the more more we can get these discussions out, um, even even uh, even using ChatGPT to help refine or to help us. Get over some of these disagreements, you know. I think when then we'll everyone will know what the beetle looks like, you know. And uh, um, yeah, it, is it a Volkswagen or is it is it an insect? Yeah. No, but <laughs> look. I, so yeah. So back to the real world. I look. So so we've got this problem, right? So we create all this data. Uh, you know, it's we've got a lot of uh, 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 domains to cross. The domains go across organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, like this, just like bounce and bounce and bounce. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I think the problem that that me me as well um, um, as engineers uh, that we do uh, is that we 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 sometimes put the technology first. Yeah. Right? Oh, or, or the tool. oh, god, yeah. Uh, and so yeah, so thinking about things like uh, stewardship and it's, it's a it's a community thing. Yeah. Uh, back to the again the first thing Paul said. Which is that you have to have some problem. I feel like in 2023, let's say 2024, if I'm uh, we've got some pretty standard questions that we ask of our data, at least in, in our world. Yeah. In, in the enterprise world, there, there's uh, we want to know things like you know, you know, what servers are being used by uh, uh, being allocated to a resource, you know, at what capacity, uh, you know, what's my acquisition cost for my customer, for my yeah. best customer. Yeah. Uh, uh, how does it affect my total lifetime value as mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> there are there are business questions that we just ask, no matter where we go. Yeah, and uh, just going back to Phil's, Phil's question here, and and um, yeah, well, and I think whenever we're defining quality rules, 
we need to understand what that quality rule is enabling. And we make many decisions on data. And sometimes the quality, the quality for one use case may not be at the same level needed for another use case. So I think if, if we start in this world of defining all the data needs to meet all of these quality requirements, otherwise not going to be used, we're going to have probably a subset of data. The data will actually become bad data because you don't have you, you haven't got the full set of it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's another slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I think to, to your question, I think it, it is a data steward that probably needs to oversee it, arbitrate it. Um, but it, it's it's the whole community in that area that needs to use that data that needs to find the quality measures. Maybe maybe in their words, get converted into machine readable um, uh, rules. Um, owning, owning the issues in the contracts, I think. Again, I, I don't think that one. I mean, maybe you can manage them, but I think it, it's you need contracts for use cases. And who owns that contract for the use case? I'm, I'm in two minds about. It. I don't know whether whether it's the the the. Um, Doesn't matter who owns them. I, I think what. As long as they're as long as they're there, and I think someone owns it. As long as someone owns it. Yeah, and and that it's a it's an output. Uh, it's going to be you know different organizations are going to have different level. So a really big it probably does have you know dedicated people. Well, I'm um, Phil from Saintsbury, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah so a big team there. Um, um, just just to add something. Um, to, to to what's already been said, I, I think that I mean the issue of data quality is is a really hard one, and and one of the reasons that that makes it hard is because um, I think the quality metrics vary from one application context to another, and they also depend on um, how you're going to use that data and what the data is. So so to just give one example in machine vision. Um, we might think that having crystal clear images is the best kind of data that we could use to yeah. to yield a machine vision capability. But actually, it often helps to work with degraded images or very yeah. noisy images because the injection of noise present, prevents overgeneralization. And in fact, you see that as well in in our in our own brains, right? Our, our brains are inherently noisy systems. Each individual neuron is not a reliable layer of information. <laughs> but that noise, that de degradation of data, actually plays a productive role in yielding um, cognitive and epistemic success. It makes us the yeah. sort of beings that we are. So I, yeah, I think the issue I, of quality is, is quite a difficult one. It, it is. And, and um, you, you touched on something there that, that, um, that reminded me. I was at a, um, a conference last week in, in New York. It was a spatial data conference at the Columbia University. And it, spatial data, is, it was, was really interesting, honestly. But it was, for me anyway. Um, and what, one, of, one of the ones on there, we were talking about quality of like uh, images. And they were doing analysis of uh, forest fires. And then looking at the forest fires to determine how big they were, how long that vegetation was um, burnt or, or, uh, or uh, no longer being beneficial to the environment with regards to, you know, um, um, carbon, carbon, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, sorry, or, or uh, um, taking, taking out, uh, oh, sorry, reflecting the sun. What, what effect is having on, on the environment? And they were saying that the satellite images, as long as it's the cloud cover is less than 8%, they could use it. Anything more than that, it was useless. And I and the, the word that came out, I loved it, was embrace imperfections. And uh, we all we have to, we're all, we all humans, we all get imperfections, but the data always, always is going to have imperfections as well. But not every imperfection means that data is no longer usable. Um in, a, in, in the same in the same way that uh, you know you can have a contract for that data being used. It may be that it has to have no cloud cover to to be used for um uh, uh, a plane landing or something autonomously, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, maybe not. But it, 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 in those cases, it, it may need. It. But for the purpose of actually assessing the the area that's just had a fire, maybe you know, was, and they were saying less than eight percent was 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 it was good. So here we go. We got another one. So no, and the good. It's it's almost like you're you're reading the next slide. Now, so, and this is I think where the conversation I think with Paul and I think we're working on it anyways. 
Uh, yeah, so the uh, we have to have some idea, we have to have some concept of, of the life cycle of a data product, uh, right? And and probably at the beginning, when, so this is what this is what I would like, right? Mm. I'm leaving this to you because you're the data guy. Uh, you, if you and your buddies can solve this for me, I'm going to go on it. Okay, so I, what I'd like is I'm going to go start a project, and as I did when I was a developer, I've got some library, mm -hmm. right? Some known data stuff, like our world is pretty, there's a lot of stuff we know already about uh, mark, the interactions in a corporation between finance, marketing, yeah. data, observability. Like, there should just be some libraries about known data things. All right. Exactly. I've, sol I've solved the problem. Speak to Lee Ball later. We're doing something on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, it's and it's funny that I told you this before you'd even told me about that. Okay. So the second thing, and, and that requires something like centralized repos like yep. we have with, with yep. um, in the development world. Then, uh, and, and this is this is process stuff, right? Is yeah. Then, that, then assuming that I'm um, maybe uh, going to change it, do some new data stuff that uh -huh. wasn't there before. What we I feel like what we don't have right now, and I think this is what Paul and I were, were lamenting, is uh, uh, some standardized um, uh, process, right? Where if I'm making any data thing, yeah. uh, I'm going to create it, announce it, uh, and then collaborate with people on that. Mm. Um, that way, everybody's. Not, I mean, obviously, the, there's competitive issues, but I mean, some of the stuff, you know, it, you know, it, it's not that. I think mean, the collaboration is key, and as you know from the stuff like I'm doing, is, is that, and it's getting that business engagement. And again, we day to day we live in that bubble. Um, we we don't. Um, we all see these problems. We bang on about it. We we talk down the pub down with all other data people, say how bad it is. But unfortunately, the people we need to talk to is the business, and we need to get them understanding uh, understanding the, the, the challenges because they're the ones that can do that validation of that data. We don't work in the business; we don't the technologies. But they understand what's happening every day and how that data is being used. So, the more we can do to get them involved in that feedback loop to help with that contract, the quality, the usage, um, I think. The, the quicker that cycle can become, you know, the create, announce, collab, it becomes it becomes more of an initiative, uh, quicker, quicker route to life. Well, yeah, and so the reason I, I wanted to have this discussion, right, is because look, if we have words for these problems yep. and for the possible solutions, so ideally, you know, maybe a couple of years from now, I go into a new organization and the, the non-data people, yep. the people in marketing, the, the leadership people in you know, marketing, finance, mm -hmm. HR, uh, they know that these that they should do, they're gonna ask me, yep. is my data is my data going to be able to do these things? Yep. And they'll have like a shortcut for saying, does it follow this process yep. of, of going from invention to maturity? Mm -hmm. um, and is it in step one or two or three? I think what, when, the, when, when the business end starts to do, yeah, when my end starts to ask the data end yeah. uh, for, for this to be in place, then that's when I think we'll really succeed. Yeah. yeah I, I think we are going in the right direction. More and more people are aware of it. I, I did a, did a uh, post that was saying, which I haven't got back to, it was a really good response about the role of a CDO, where they report to an organization. And, um, you yeah, know, and I, I think. Data, data way of thinking is we're going to become more embedded in the C-suite. So you're going to have CEOs at data savvy. You're going to have a CEO, hopefully. You have a COO that's data savvy. Well, CCO data savvy. Well, I'm proven that. I'm a CEO of data savvy. I think, anyway. Um, yeah, so I think we, we are moving into that, that world where it's, it's data literacy, data enablement, whatever you want to call, call it now, is people are much more aware of this stuff. I, I suppose it, it's the same... So you look about IT, you know, when, when people were still do, still doing very manual processes, they didn't know the art of the possible of a workflow of what can be done or automation of what we done. And that's given now. Everyone understands it. I think when we are moving moving into the space where data people, the business can understand what data can do. And if it's our role in, in, in this world while we're still here, giving back to the communities to try and show that art of the possible to the business to let them know what can be achieved if they do these things. Yeah, but I, and I think the way to do it is for them to. It's this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but to have a language or about what, what questions to what questions. Yeah. To I have the, I, they should be standardized. I should go to five places I mean, I, and ask five different questions. Yes. I mean, I've been you know doing this this 
doing this book, which is taking a lot longer than we expected, but it, it's you know, we, we, we're bogged down on the word business value. What is what is a definition of business value? We, we, we were on that for months with different iterations and and and, and people maybe not that months, but yeah, we're going backwards and forwards and go what 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 you know, what it actually means. And I think the more we can actually come to a common understanding of what we're talking about with these things, you know, even with data quality, with data contract, I, I mean, I still think you know, data quality is not not clearly un understood um yeah you know, and when we talk about and we, we talked just before before we talk about quality of missing data wrong attributes inconsistency we never talked about the quality of the ontology that's on top of it that's not normally talked about and that is the next level of, of quality is is that data set with the, the associated metadata is it fit for purpose for the decision i need it to make and uh yeah we're a little way off that i think oh. I think we're at least we're talking about it. Yeah, we are. We are. So we got we got five more minutes. So we, we could come on for ages, but I, I've got a few more bullet points that we we haven't. So, um, so we talked about the fidelity kept coming up a few few times. We want to go on to this. Somewhere. What what are levels are uh, of fidelity? Or so I think the, so. Those three, at least for me, those yep. are, those are the three that I've seen is. Um, you've got you got strategy. So, yep. so you got you got the 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 gods above thinking about what's going to happen next year and five years from now. Yeah. Uh, you've got your operations people in the middle. Uh, they're you know they, they want to know how many people do I need to, to bring into the call center next month. Yeah. Next quarter, you know, what's going to happen? Uh, and then there's like you know down you've got the computers talking to each other and yep. you've got the weirdos like you and me. <laughs> who are like trying like something's gone wrong uh, and we have to go look at the data uh, and we care what, whether something went down you know at point zero zero you know one millisecond after uh, or another um, um I, I think i think mixing i think ha having an awareness that those are different things yeah uh and that when the gods above are asking you to mix all three of those that you're mm -hmm. about to step onto the highway and get clobbered. Yeah. Um, I, I think being able to say like, look, you're asking, you're, you're about, you're asking me to do something really crazy now. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be difficult anyway. So we can do it. Uh, but I think for us as, as a people like making the system, it's really important to just be able to, to talk about things. Yeah. In common language. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Val, hi Val, shout out to Val. Um, he used to, he, I think it's easy to get you with that, but, uh, 11 definitions for the word of flight <laughs> you know and, and that's that's where the that's where they um a, 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 a well known out so um yeah and we you we, we do make things difficult for ourselves i think sometimes um so yeah so coming back to three minutes left so I think we got the we love, i think what we haven't done is the balance of cost versus the value for ai edge cases i probably want to, to finish on that well one. yeah so the so those edge cases if you go back to the the, the chart with a little arrow with a little robot on it uh, 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 there, no. yeah so so the, so the way that it's presented is that there is uh like that curve crosses mm. at some point um and there's a, you can imagine that just a person is just a really expensive AI yeah. that costs you, you know, however many tens of thousands of, of pounds a year to, to feed it, right? Uh, and what we're constantly trying to figure out is like, how can you how can you take that number down? Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that is for all intents and purposes automation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, improvements. Yeah. It's really yeah. It's just you know, it's just you know, I, I worked on projects where people were copy pasting data around. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, God bless them, but we have, you know, they have, they were no longer necessary no. for the organization. No. It, it was, it wasn't great, but, but the, it was like, uh, time at time had passed by, right? So I think what you want to understand is, uh, what are those numbers for, for that low value stuff? Yep. Uh, and then in the middle, uh, we get to these, these real hard problems, uh, that do require data contextualization. Oh. Um, and so the value starts to come in when you can contextualize your data yep. uh, without having to have a doc. Like if I don't have a, if I don't need a doctor to to make sense of my data because I created it in yep. such a way that it's useful for the machine learning, yep. then that, that line's going to get closer and closer. Yep. Um, and then there's just going to be a point that uh, you know until Paula and his and his uh, AI takes over, uh, <laughs> it's going to be quite a while before 
you know, and then people are still going to be like, they're, they're still going to be these really magical context making machines. Yeah. All right. I think we're pretty much on the air. It looks like we could have gone on a lot longer for the discussion. Um, a big shout. Thank you very much, Paul, for, for coming on here and, Thanks, and uh, yeah, and adding, adding value from, uh, from, uh, from your experience in this area. Uh, big shout out to George for, for uh, coming along and some great slides. So next week we have uh, data as a revenue engine. I think we make the timing I need to work out. It may not be 9 PST because I think um, you uh, the, the times the time zone change in one week. So it's definitely 5 p.m. UK time. Um, we may, may have a tight change on that. Um, and if you want to catch up with Paul, reach out to Paul, you'll find on LinkedIn. It took me a little while to find you though. So Paul, if you want to put your LinkedIn uh, contact on the, on the show details as a comment, people can reach out and connect to you there. Um, George, um, your details, you think you, well, you're on there. George is on the original one. So click on the link to catch up with George. Um, anything new coming up you want to share either of you? Any, any interest in happening? Um, well, just to say that, um, that, that 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 we're continuing work on ontologies for um, for the for for, for, for cybersecurity and Internet of Things. So we hope to oh, to wow. make that all available soon, um, yeah. and uh, hopefully that leads to a, a more concerted effort to develop ontologies and standards for for other industrial sectors. Cool. All right. Looking forward to seeing that. And if anyone's in London tomorrow, we have our monthly uh, data meetup, low key data meetup uh, in Old Street at, um, well, Tabernacle Street at uh, Cuba. So, usual place, you'll see the usual suspects come down and check that out. Uh, I say the show's next week with Solomon on there. Um, you know, an interesting post about uh, data contracts recently, if you want to check that out, it seems to get a lot of attention. So, thank you everyone for tuning in. And until next week, thank you. Bye-bye.